Dad kicked me out at 18, and now he wants to walk me down the aisle. I shut him down and blocked his sorry sass. I'm a 28-year-old female and will be getting married next month. I didn't invite my father to the wedding, but now he's trying to get in touch. I think I need to explain the context, because it all started when I was 6 years old, when my parents got divorced after my dad cheated on my mom with my stepmother. After that, I spent most of my time with my mom. But during holidays and vacations, I stayed with my dad. When I was 8, my half-brother Jake, 20 male was born, and whenever I was with my dad, I was forced to take care of him. When I started high school, I had to move in with my dad because my mom had to move abroad for work. This period was one of the hardest of my life. My stepmother wasn't a bad person, she tried to include me in things, but she was very submissive to my father. As for my dad, he always treated me like an extra in the house, someone who didn't really belong there. I was constantly responsible for taking care of Jake, and whenever he went out, he would only take my stepmother and Jake, never inviting me. One of the most painful experiences happened when I was 14. My dad announced that the whole family was going to Disney for vacation, but the day before the trip, he told me that he wanted it to be a family moment, their first big trip with Jake. So, I was left home alone. This had already become a pattern. Trips to the beach, zoos, or other outings always included just my stepmother and Jake while I was left behind. My dad didn't like me going out with friends or inviting them over. He said, teenagers together only cause trouble, and because he was controlling, he would call the house phone at random times to check if I was home. He also had a trusted neighbor who would keep an eye on me to make sure I didn't have any visitors. When I turned 16, living with him, the feeling of being an extra only got worse. Everything I had experienced during vacations, the exclusion and sense of abandonment, became part of my daily life. Things came to a head when I turned 18. My dad got a promotion at work and decided to take a family trip to Europe. Since it was my last year of high school, I was excited, thinking I'd finally be included. But then he told me he didn't have enough money for a trip for four, so it would just be to celebrate Jake's 10th birthday. I had to stay home. That's when I snapped. I told him he was being unfair and that he shouldn't have given me false hope. I explained how I'd felt over the past years, and he called me ungrateful and spoiled, saying that I lived with him rent-free, which was a lie since my mom sent money to support me and I did all the housework because both he and my stepmother worked late. The argument escalated, and he kicked me out of the house, saying I was no longer part of the family and not even his daughter. He literally threw me out and tossed my things onto the sidewalk. Luckily, a friend lived nearby, and I stayed at her place that night. The next day, I went back to see if my dad had calmed down, but I found my things still on the sidewalk, and some even in the trash. My stepmother had kindly saved a few items for me and handed them over. After that, my dad never reached out, except to call and yell at me a month later when my mom stopped sending him money for my expenses. A few months later, I got into an engineering program in another state, where I met my now fiancé, Mark, 29 male. He was a senior, and we soon connected, realizing we had a lot in common. We started dating, graduated, and now work in the same field, though at different companies. A few months ago, Mark proposed, and I happily said yes. I have social media, but I rarely use it. I've had Instagram for about 6 years but haven't even posted 10 pictures. I think one of my relatives must have told my dad about the wedding because, about a month after I accepted the proposal, he reached out to me through Instagram, saying he was excited to help with the wedding. I was surprised, both that he had messaged me and that he genuinely thought he would walk me down the aisle. I responded, saying he wouldn't be walking me down the aisle because my stepfather would, and that the wedding would be small, just for my close family. After that, I blocked him. After blocking him, and inspired by reading Reddit stories, I expected calls, messages, and even letters full of insults like ungrateful or spoiled. However, the only thing I received was a letter delivered by Jake. Yes, we still have contact. In the letter, my father expressed how sorry he was. I won't copy the exact words, but to summarize, he said that after kicking me out, he lived a normal life with my stepmother and Jake. But when he saw pictures of my graduation with my mom and stepfather, he started feeling regret. He wanted to talk to me, but his pride held him back. He only decided to reach out now because he realized that his pride got him nowhere and that he wanted to fulfill one of the plans he made when I was born, to pay for my wedding and walk me down the aisle. Honestly, I don't know what to do. I've moved on with my life, and his attempt at redemption after so many years feels a bit too convenient. Am I the idiot for not wanting to include my dad in my wedding despite his apology? Note, my stepfather is an amazing person. He always goes out of his way to include me in everything, 
and my stepsisters are wonderful as well. When he found out that my father hadn't taken me to Disney, he planned a trip for the next holiday and took me, along with my mother and sisters. This and a thousand other reasons why I want to walk down the aisle with him. Edit 1. People are asking why my mom and stepfather left me with my dad and what their jobs are. My mom works as a programmer and managed to get a job abroad. She thought it was best to accept it, especially since she wanted to save up a good amount of money to cover college expenses and for the future. My stepfather is a researcher and was doing his postdoctoral work at the time. The first person to talk to me was my older sister, stepsister. Two days after I was kicked out, she came to see me and even stayed for a few days, which I can barely remember because I was just crying. But I didn't move in with her because she lives in another state, and I was almost done with classes and final exams. So, my friend and bridesmaid let me stay at her house. Her parents helped me gather my things and even set up the guest room for me. Relevant comments. Not the idiot. Your bio father's regrets are his problem, not yours. Your real father, your stepfather, the man who treated you as a father should, is the one who should walk you down the aisle. That other guy is just a bad memory to put behind you. Bio father treated OP like a pet he didn't want. Stepfather treated OP like his third daughter. Bio father multiple times deliberately excluded OP from family trips. Stepfather went out of his way to include OP in trips. Bio father kicked OP out of his house yet still expected to be paid. Stepfather did not act like a doucheback. There is no contest here. You're absolutely not the idiot. Your dad made his choices and completely shut you out for years, treating you like an outsider in his own family. Now that he wants to play the dad card because you're getting married, it feels more like a convenient afterthought than genuine remorse. You've built a loving and supportive family with your mom and stepfather, who actually care about you. It's totally valid to want them by your side on such a significant day. Your happiness matters, and you deserve to celebrate with those who truly appreciate you. I bet it's because news of the engagement has spread and people have started asking him about his daughter's wedding. OP says he seemed genuine, but the only thing I can picture him being excited about here is finding ways to make this about himself again. If I were OP I would totally keep NC, it really doesn't seem worth whatever nonsense he's going to spew at the wedding and reception. If he truly were remorseful, then he wouldn't be assuming crap. He would be reaching out and telling OP how sorry he was, that he missed her, and that he wants to be there for her on the wedding and meet with her again beforehand. He would understand that it takes time to build a relationship back again, and accept being able to attend the wedding as a guest. If he were remorseful he could have sent her a check to pay for the wedding, an apology with explanation of his regret, and no ask for himself whatsoever. Update. I'm back with an update, but first, let me explain why I'm using a different account. The account I originally posted from belonged to my friend. I'm not very active on social media, so I didn't create an account just to post something I didn't expect would get so much attention. I thought there would be, at most, one follow-up to share whether or not I invited my dad to the wedding. However, some people started asking why there were inconsistencies, like the age difference or why I mentioned my parents were married in one post and not in this one. Well, that's why. The story you read belonged to my friend, the same friend who let me stay with her. She also encouraged me to share my own story since I wanted opinions from neutral people, not those close to me or my dad. And wow, did I get a lot of feedback. Lol. Now, regarding the comments, I want to thank everyone for helping me see things I hadn't noticed before, especially in how my dad's letter was written. For those wondering, yes, he mostly talked about his feelings and how he felt. Very little was said about me, and even less was about apologizing. He also mentioned how I'm his only daughter, while my stepfather has two daughters to walk down the aisle, but he only has me. For those asking why I didn't move abroad with my mom and stepfather, they were supposed to be away for three to five years, with my mom likely needing to change companies every year. My stepfather was also deep in his research, so their lives were pretty unstable. At the time, I didn't anticipate how much I'd suffer or that I'd be kicked out. I think the rare times I spent with my dad and the feeling of being left behind would fade whenever I was with my mom and stepfather. This cycle became my routine, which is why I stayed with my sperm donor. And for those asking if my mom knew what was going on, I only told her about the Disney incident. I didn't want to bring issues from one home into another. Now for the update. For some background on my mom, she returned two years after I started college, and my real dad came back a year after that. It was my sisters who attended my high school graduation. My mom now lives two hours away, so I went to visit her to discuss what had happened and to get her and my stepfather's thoughts on the situation. My mom said it was something I had to decide on my own and that she wouldn't interfere. 
My stepfather told me he'd help pay for the wedding, regardless of what I chose to do, yes, he's helping with some expenses. My sisters, on the other hand, share the same opinion as most of you, not to invite him and to send him a letter detailing everything I went through. My older sister, let's call her Lisa, was the most against inviting him. Lisa was the first person to check on me. Today, I learned that on the same day she came to see me at my friend's house, she also stopped to talk to my dad. She hadn't mentioned it before because, according to her, he only spouted nonsense, and sharing it at the time would have just made things worse for me. That's why she's completely against me reconnecting with him. For those curious about what he said, she didn't go into details but mentioned that it angered her so much she ended up shouting at him, calling him every name under the sun. She thinks this may be one of the reasons he didn't reach out sooner, she think that added fuel to the fire. We talked a lot, not just about my dad but about myself as well. I realized that even with the therapy I went through during college, there was something important I hadn't done, I never truly opened up to my parents. I always thought I had to face and overcome everything alone. All I did, though, was bottle everything up. Today, I was finally able to unpack it all and share my feelings. After a lot of tears, I hugged them both. And here's what I've decided. I will respond to his letter. Unfortunately for Mark and Lisa, it won't be the harsh response they were hoping for. I'll take some of your advice and express how I felt when he kicked me out. I'll be polite but honest. I'll also let him know that my stepfather will walk me down the aisle because that's what I want. I won't offer further explanations to him, after all, this is my wedding with Mark, and it will be exactly how we want it, without the need for justifications. I will not accept any money from him, nor will I send him an invitation. If my dad truly wants to reconcile, he can reach out to me through Jake, but only after the wedding or honeymoon, and it will be on my terms. As someone suggested, we're going to hire security for the wedding, no matter how my dad reacts. For those wondering, yes, Jake has been invited. As I mentioned, we still have a good relationship, and he's allowed to take photos. Story 2 I, 21 female reside in a mandatory evacuation zone for Hurricane Milton, and my parents, 53 female, 52 male are absolutely refusing to evacuate our house. My boyfriend who lives in Orlando traveled over an hour to see me this morning to try and offer my parents a place to stay with him, to convince them to leave since nothing I've said has had any effect. Bring us sandbags and help us board up our windows and last minute preparations, since my parents didn't even want to do that much. I'm extremely stressed out and worried for the safety of my family which includes my teenage brother and our two cats, because if we are to be hit as hard as the news predicts it's unfair of us as their owners who are responsible for their well-being to make them suffer unnecessarily. I even asked my boyfriend if he would be willing to take my cats back to Orlando with him and have them stay at his parents' place for a little until the storm passes, to which he of course agreed. But my mother doubled down and insisted that things will be fine and she can handle taking care of the cats. The entire situation is surreal to me. I can't understand the root of my parents' stubbornness, maybe it's material attachment, but to willingly put me, my brother, and my cat's well-beings at risk is unfathomable to me. I feel like they're not taking it seriously because we've never been seriously impacted by a hurricane before, and they're under the assumption they'll be able to just ride it out like any other storm. But this isn't any other storm. When my BF and I pressed the issue before he left back home my father snapped at me and told me if I want to go, then to just go and that they'll be fine here at home. My BF tells me that my brother and I shouldn't have to pay the cost of their decision or be obligated to stay just because they choose to. I want to prioritize my own and my cat's well-being but at the same time the thought of leaving my parents behind obviously breaks my heart. What could I possibly do? Would I be the idiot if I were to leave? Edit, I already posted a separate update. But I figured since this is still gaining steady traction, I would update here too. Our plan changed last minute, again. But my parents, brother, are cats. And I ended up staying with a group of relatives 30 miles further inland. Unfortunately, not Orlando as originally planned, because my father deemed it too dangerous to drive that far on the roads this morning when we woke up at 7. However, I am genuinely very happy to have my entire family with me. Had we gone to Orlando to stay with my boyfriend, as intended, my mother would most likely have stayed behind in a local emergency shelter, as she didn't want to travel that far. We left at 9am and arrived around 10am it is currently 10pm, and we're experiencing fluctuating rain and wind, but so far we still have power, water, etc. My cats are probably a little stressed but otherwise safe and healthy. Thankfully, they did very well on the car ride over. I've been on the phone with my boyfriend, and all of us, our families included, are still doing well. Thank you so much to everyone who is invested in our well-being.
I will update again after the hurricane passes. Relevant comments. Isn't it too late to hit the road now? Where are you? Heavy traffic seems to be going further north, up to Tallahassee, because most people are fleeing the state, not going further inland. My boyfriend drove back to Orlando at 10 p.m. and got home just now at 11.40 p.m. with no problem. He said the roads are empty. Are you leaving with your brother and your cats? Everyone here is telling you that's the smart choice. Please update us because I'm not sure I'll be able to sleep tonight out of worry for you, your brother, and your cats. Leaving is the right choice, even though it's hard. You're not abandoning them. You're saving yourself and the people, pets who are dependent on you, the only rational adult in the situation. I've already spoken to my brother, and he's agreed to come if I go. I told him to start packing. I've been meaning to start myself, and I know the situation is dire, but I can't stop crying reading these comments. I know it's the right thing to do, but my parents mean everything to me, and I don't want to leave them behind. I'll go, but I'm going to fight tooth and nail to try and convince them to come with me one last time. Update. Hi all. After a lot of crying, pleading, and arguing, both among themselves and with each other, my parents have finally agreed to leave the house. My father will be accompanying me and my brother to Orlando, and my mother will be evacuating to a nearby emergency shelter, which a friend of mine, who lives down the road, is currently staying at with her family as well. I do wish we were all leaving together, and I'm still worried about my mom, but she doesn't want to travel far, and just over the moon to be able to get her to budge this far at all. I think it's a lot better than having my parents fend for themselves alone in the house. I'm considering leaving the cats with my mother after all, because the shelter is pet friendly and much closer to us than Orlando. Both of my cats have extreme travel anxiety and will pee, poop, and puke when left in the car for extended periods. Since this will be a stressful and traumatic ordeal for them either way, I want to at least spare them the long car ride. My boyfriend lives in a fairly small apartment with his parents, who also own a small chihuahua. On top of the chances that my cats wouldn't really like being around a free-roaming dog, they don't even like each other that much. We usually keep them separated, or else they'll scuffle. My boyfriend's mom is also not too fond of cats, and I just wouldn't want to burden her more on top of how gracious she's already being. I'm not entirely sure if this is the right call. I know they would be stressed out in either situation, but at least with my mom, they'd also be able to keep her company. I know a lot of you interpreted her actions to keep the cats at home as selfish, and they were. But I genuinely love my mom more than any person in the world, and I know she has good intentions, just bad judgment sometimes. As of right now, I am still at home. We're beginning to experience some light rainfall, but my brother is asleep and still unpacked. I'm going to sleep for a couple of hours before we head out first thing in the morning. Like I said before, traffic inland is not too bad. At worst, the drive should be a little over two hours, which is already the average time with regular traffic. My dad and I are already packed, and I'm confident all of us will be situated in time, well before the hurricane hits Wednesday night. I also just wanted to say, first and foremost, thank you to every single one of you who has reached out with genuine concern and good intentions, who has encouraged me to leave, and who has kept me and my family in their thoughts despite us being complete strangers. When I made my last post, I felt so, so helpless and alone. I thought I was overreacting or exaggerating things by feeling the way I felt, and I never fathomed it would gain so much traction. Thank you for supporting me and my family. I hope everyone else is also able to stay safe and close to their loved ones during these times. Final update. We got home earlier this morning, and thankfully, aside from some flooded roads, lots of debris, and a loss of power, our house and neighborhood are all good. So now I guess my parents can say, I told you so, lol. But I'm very relieved and fortunate to be able to say that, and I'm glad it's not the alternative. My relatives, whose house we were staying at, also experienced no flooding or major damage, and the drive home wasn't bad either. The cats are also okay. The only injuries we sustained were some scratches from trying to give one of them a bath, because he pooped himself in the carrier on the way home. Other than that, everyone is safe and well, and I cannot thank everyone enough for your concern and support. Thank you to everyone who reached out to share their stories and experiences. I hope you all remain safe, prepared, and cautious for any storms ahead. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you really like our videos, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.